Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy! Today we have a piece of white oak. This comes to us from my buddy Dennis in California. The piece measures about six inches in diameter, about five and a half inches tall. I have a, an idea in mind for this. I'm not sure that it's tall enough for what I want to do, but I'm going to try it anyway. It'll turn into something if it doesn't turn into what I want it to be. What I'm going to do, because this will be an end grain turning, and I'm, I'm not always happy to trust the woodworm screw on an end grain turning, I'm going to attach this faceplate ring right here in the center with four screws, and I'm sure that'll hold it just fine. And then this fits onto my chuck, and the chuck jaws open up into that groove. That groove is a dovetail, so it won't come, won't come off the chuck. Very secure fitting. I'll show you here in just a minute how all that works. My heater is running because it's winter time. So I've mounted that faceplate ring up in the center of this. And I just put it on here and then open the jaws up into that recess. And it will hold it securely. Boy, you know, you just shouldn't say stuff like that. This will be the one time on it. Then I'll bring up my tailstock and apply some pressure here. I like to spin the piece up just a little bit and then bring up the live center and that way I know it's finding the exact center spot that it likes. Just like that, I'm going to lock it down, bring up the tool rest. We're going to work on the side here first. I'm going to grab a 5 8 inch bowl gouge, get my mask and face shield on and let's see what speed we're going to be turning at. For now about 6.50. I'm also going to wear a glove because I think this might hurt a bit. Can you guess? I'm still a fun guy. I think I'd probably pick the speed up quite a bit now. Yeah, it was a little over 900. Okay, we're getting there. Now the hard part. I'm going to switch to a half inch swept back bowl gouge because I want to get up in here. I want to undercut this lid so I need something a little narrower. Now we're getting there, but I'm, I'm scared of losing that bark, and that'll just ruin the piece if we don't have the bark. But there's really, there's really not much wood under that bark. I really like this bark area right here, uh, so I want to make it look as good as I can. And this is kind of, kind of flaky in here, so I'm gonna add some CA. And then I'm going to rub in some dust from this turning. Try and fill that up a little bit, make it a little more stable. And then I'll return that a little bit just to clean it up. 
Yeah, that helped quite a bit. So I'll finish that up and I'll be back in a minute. Well, I, I went ahead and uh, cleaned that up. It looks good. I also put CA all the way around this bark because it was the same kind of shredded softness in this inner bark around here. So I put CA all the way around it. I cleaned it up. I've had a chance to study this a little bit while I was waiting for the CA to set up. And I think I've gone up far enough. What I was gonna do is make a bowl in the top of this. I was just gonna make a bowl and not hollow it out. And I still might do that. Or I might hollow it out. I'm trying to decide what good it would be if it was hollowed out, you know, what would, what would you put in there? I, I thought just a bowl on the top and then looking as this does. Okay, it's a mushroom. I can't help it, I'm, I'm on a mushroom kick. So I'm afraid if I go up in here too high, my bowl won't be able to be very deep. And it's high enough to, to look like a mushroom. So I'm good with that. So I'm going to mark out for a tenon. And we'll put a tenon on here and then we'll be done and it'll be time to work on the top side. And for the tenon I'll use a half inch bowl gouge. Well I guess I'll use a 3 8 I can't get up in there far enough. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. And that's good. Time for sanding. I'm going to start with my sandal flex at 180 grit. I'm going to sand this bark edge up here. And I'll sand uh, the inclusions right here. That's probably about it. And 180 grit is as fine as I go on the bark. Then I'll change to my two inch sanding disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400 grit. And I'll show you how that's gonna work as soon as I get my mask on. And I'll do more of that, but that's just to show you what it looks like. And I'll come at it from the other direction as well, and this way. Come at it from all directions so that I'm sure I get inside of everything I can. And that just serves to clean it up very well and uh, smooth it out so that it feels good when you touch it. And then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 300 RPM, When I'm finished with the power drill, then I'll peel the disc off and I'll spin the lathe forward because it's easier. And I'll just hold it in my fingers and get up under here. Like that. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And like I said, I'll do that up through 400 grit and I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on here. See you in a bit. Well, I was just about positive that I was going to put uh, shellac on this. But now that it's sanded and it's so nicely rounded and so smooth and natural looking, I think it just calls for uh, the Howard Feed and Wax. So that's what I'm using. It always makes the piece feel so silky smooth. And that's this stuff if you're not familiar with it. And they are not a sponsor. I don't get anything for telling you that. I'm just telling you what I use, that's all. I don't have any sponsors. And that's probably a good thing, isn't it? I also don't have any advertisements. You might have noticed that. No advertisements on my videos. This is from me to you. Well, this is just so 
so beautiful to me. This is, I just love this shape. I'm not sure how I came up with it, but I love it. And then I'll use a brush to put it on the bark. I'm just going to squeeze it onto this brush here. And then the way I get it out of here, once it sets up about a half an hour from now, I will uh, spin the piece slowly and blow compressed air on it and blow it out of all the bark recesses. And then I'll take a clean toothbrush and buff it out of here, much like I'm doing right here. Oh yeah, so nice. I was just watching Gord Rock's latest video today. Gord Rock, he's a terrific wood turner, Canadian, nice guy, funny guy. And he puts out just the best videos, so, so professionally edited. Anyway, he just really, he just really got me laughing. He has a little alter ego, and when I say little, I mean he's a miniature, a miniature gourd, a mini me, gourd rock. Give him a look if you haven't. He's uh, he's very good at what he does. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set up for about a half an hour. I'll come out here. I'll spin it up and hold a rag against it just to buff it off. And then, like I said, I'll use a toothbrush on the bark and clean that all up. And then it'll be time to start working on the inside, and that's when I'll bring you back. See you in a bit. I've turned the piece around and have the tenon mounted up in the chuck. You know, I'm just really torn. I'm just really torn. I intended to make a bowl, and I want to make a bowl, and I'm probably going to make a bowl. But it's, but it's all this wasted space inside there if I don't hollow it out. But I want the finished look of a bowl. If it's hollowed out, then it, it, I, I just don't think it'll, it'll look good. Uh, I don't know. You, you might disagree with me, and you're certainly welcome to express that disagreement. I will listen, but by then it'll be too late, I suppose. The only plus to hollowing it out is then it might make a nice little vase, but it would only look good if it had flowers in it. When it didn't have flowers in it, it wouldn't look so good. I, I just think a finished bowl is gonna look best for this. We're gonna be turning at 900 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. I'm just checking the, the thickness right here where it comes up underneath. I got lots of room. Oh boy, about three sixteenths is all I've got here, which is enough, but uh, just barely. I think we're done. Boy, I hope this is okay with you. It is pretty much exactly what I had in mind. I'm just wasting all that space in the in the stem of the mushroom, but you know, it's a mushroom bowl. It's not a mushroom something else. I've got about as clean a cut as I can get. I don't see any ridges or valleys in there. I don't think. My scraper will do any better, but I'll try.
Well, it is a little, little bit better. Isn't any worse, that's for sure. So, we're done. Time for sanding. Well, that's going to be about the easiest sanding job I ever did. I'm starting at 80 grit, working up through 400. I'll bring you back here in a minute and we'll put some finish on it. Okay, we'll get this finished up. I hope I'm not making a mistake with not uh, hollowing it out. It would have made a good vase, I, I understand that. That's just not what I had in mind for it. And again, I think it would only look good as a vase when it had something in it. I also thought long and hard about putting a lid on here, but you know, it's a mushroom and I want it to look like a mushroom and I don't know what kind of lid I'd put on here and still be able to maintain the, the natural look of this particular piece of wood with the bark and all. And then any kind of lid would have to have a, a handle or a finial or something and that would really spoil it in, in my opinion but I'm just the wood turner guy I'm not I'm not an artist type person I don't know what looks good always okay I'll let that set up for 20 minutes buff it up and I'll be right back we'll take that tenon off I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck it has a non-slip surface on it I'm gonna place the bowl over that and bring up my tailstock I still have the center hole there for reference, so I'll just drive my live center into that. Wiggle the piece around a little bit, make sure it feels like it's centered, and it does. I'll bring up my tool rest, spin the piece up, hold my thumbnail against the edge of the tenon, see if it's running true. And it's right on the money. Apply a little pressure. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. Now that's pretty small. I want to adjust my tool rest a little bit closer and a little bit higher because the worst thing you can do is get under that little bit left there. Now I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch sweat back bowl gouge and I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM. Now again, this is end grain and it tends to break away when you least expect it. So now I'm going to turn the speed down to 200 RPM. I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch, pressure towards the headstock. And when that little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Kind of like that. Then I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Well, there we have it. One white oak mushroom bowl in the books. What do you think? Did I make a mistake not hollowing it out? It's a bowl. It's not a vase. Maybe it should have been a vase. You let me know what you think. I love the bark on here, and I love that grain. And I love my shape that I came up with. Kind of whimsical and totally usable. I don't know what for, but it's a bowl. Works for me. Hope you like it. Thank you, Dennis, for bringing this up for all to enjoy. 
If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.